What's up, everybody? My name is Elliot. We're back here today with Jacob this time and the Car Trek Maserati, which is over there. Should be over here, but we're going to move it in a second. Anyway, today we are going to be test fitting or maybe permanently fitting a lot of the stuff you saw us unbox in the last video with Jacob's help because he's actually really good at this sort of thing. So real quick, I actually thought this would be a fun opportunity to show you how the starting procedure on the Maserati actually is. See, this car is known for killing its battery and having electrical issues. So they actually thought of this. Come, come check this out. You got to lift the trunk up and then in here, there is a factory battery cutout. So you turn that on and you can hear something beep and the car is on. But double side note, while we're back here, you'll notice this other box. Check out what's in here. Anybody recognizes this, this is a clutch. It's a used clutch from one of the Cambia Corsa equipped cars. So apparently they're the same clutch and same everything. It's just hydraulically actuated versus foot actuated uh, in the six speed cars here. So this clutch will be coming to a Johnny Car Ninja shop near you soon. Anyway, let's get this car started and moved over into position there. So get ready to listen to it crank one too many times, followed by a sweet startup bark. Let's get to it. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, used clutch out of the transmission that is notorious for eating its own clutches. Yes, but my thinking is, first of all, it was the only used clutch really available for a, like a quarter of what a new clutch costs. And also, no clutch in the world can be more used than the one that's in this one. So I don't know the condition that it's in, but it's gotta be, it just has to be better than the one that's currently in there. And like I said, it was a fraction of the price. It was worth a shot. You know, if not, I can always spend the uh, the seventeen hundred on sale price for the uh, Black Friday, man, for the full clutch Cyber Monday. So, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed this thing works out. But sure looks pretty under all the lights. She shows well. Mm -hmm. All right, so the car is moved and in position now. I've moved the pallet of parts to get everything back out. Jacob has elected, well, sort of, <laughs> to do the task of sorting the miscellaneous bags of screws because everything in this pallet arrived with bags like this of just oops uh, arrived with just bags like this of just screws but luckily they were isolated so we're kind of just assuming they go together but anyway he's grouping those together i am going to tackle the center console first because that's the thing i was kind of missing the most when i first got this car and the first thing i'm going to do with the center console is actually clean it off now a lot of you interior detail guys out there are going to cringe at this but a really quick and easy way to clean off leather is actually using windex and a cloth and just wiping it downside is it takes a little bit of the moisture out but the good news is it really actually does get the grease and grime off of it pretty effectively and this already isn't a show car so i really just want to get it cleaned up to be good enough and that's what Windex will do. So I'm gonna be cleaning this off along with removing the staples to this extra black mat thing that went in here. And then, well, then we're gonna drop the Windex. No, uh, and then- Don't drop the soap. <laughs> and then we're gonna see if we can get the center console mounted in the car. Another fun thing we found out while going through this stuff is that all of this material in here was from Hobby Lobby. So somebody just kind of went to town with play mat from Hobby Lobby and just doesn't make any sense to me, but we're writing the previous owner's wrongs. And no, Tavares did not do the black play mat thing. It was somebody before him. Let's clean this console up and see if we can get it mounted in the car. All right, so I cleaned the center console up. Jacob got all of these bolts organized. I think we're very, very close to being able to put it in. But first I need to get that leather play mat thing out. So as you can see, we've got leather play mat everywhere here and somebody has just lovingly stapled it right in. I, man, I'm gonna have to unstaple it without tearing up the existing leather. We're under here, I've removed some of them but each one of these is stapled in here like this, just with so much care. I'm so glad that they did this. 
And then this one, this one is stapled right into this console piece. It's amazing. I mean, I get why they did it. They didn't want all these exposed wires, but me personally, I'd rather have the exposed wires than this playmat crap in here. It's disgusting. All right, so one piece of mat gone. Thank goodness. Now, let's see how this is attached and what is under here. So just gotta, that doesn't look like this is secured at all, which is nice actually. Okay, look at this. I don't have to be kind to it because I don't care about it. In fact, I might wanna cut my way around this real quick or rip it, because it, because I hate it. All right, there's that. Now, gotta get my read the mirror controller out. All right, we are making progress. Here we go. All right, hang on, we're still snagged. Oop, look at that, it's out. Goodbye, Matt. Oh, good riddance. All right, so what we are left with is a whole bunch of wires and stuff and some floppiness here, but actually not that bad. And we know there's a kick panel that goes there, center console goes there. This thing's like gonna be a complete car in just a few minutes. I mean, not really, but it'll be way, way closer than it was and 100% more presentable because that was the most embarrassing thing about this car is everyone goes, ooh, ah, look at it on the outside. And then you're like, mm, please don't go look at the inside. And then they do and they're like, what's going on here? Because it's not really, it wasn't really a race car. It was just kind of weird, but that's all changing. Jacob, you think you got this kick panel screw thing figured out? Well, yeah, so they have these countersunk washers for the actual like screw and there's supposed to be seven of them and they definitely go in here because I mean, look how perfect that oh. fits. Oh I mean, yeah. You can just tell how it's worn. Problem is I can only find two of those washers and I have six of the screws. Well, if that's the case, we can honestly find some washers in the buckets over there and just get it in there. Because at this point, I'd much rather it just be in there and not perfect than concourse level uh, restoration. Because that's mean, not what we're going for. But yet. look at this. This is concourse. Oh, yeah. It's so concourse. I love this and all that. Porsche guys love that. this just because it's original and it hasn't been touched. Hey, I love it because it's original and hasn't been touched. So that actually works out. Also, just to clarify, I spoke to Tavarish and he said the headliner was not broken when he sent it to me. And he sent me a picture of the way he packed the pallet and the way it arrived was totally different. Which means UPS totally unpacked this pallet and repacked it and broke a bunch of stuff. And I looked it up. There's two colors these come in from the factory and this was a custom leather option and they are $4,000 to replace. I really think it's together enough to hold itself in place, but it still really is unfortunate that it broke. I guess that's life in the big city though. Anyway, let's- Found oh, a clue. Found a clue? This is basically, I feel like Sherlock Holmes. Through the power of deduction, we will get this car back together. But there is a washer glued to part of the like remaining center console. So I'm gonna match this washer to the one I have over here and see if we can find, all right. It's like a, I don't know, that's a different diameter than what I have over here. Ooh, plan foiled. Well, I, I do still have some washers on bolts over here. We might be able to figure it out yet. I love this organization system. Excellent work. <laughs> okay, so Jacob made a pretty pivotal discovery here. We were trying to figure out what went between this like waterfall here and the center console because this would have been still exposed. Even with the kick panels that don't go up all the way. But then I remembered we had these weird leather pieces and yep. they are what actually go there. Issue here, or the challenge I should say, is actually screwing them in. So yeah, that definitely goes there. Yeah, so this will sit in here just like that. Oh, look, how, look how nice that looks. Just look at what they did here. They just put hex nuts fiberglassed into the mold. That is incredible to see. They just placed they just placed the little hex nuts in the mold and then poured fiberglass around it. That's pretty cool. Poured, laid. <laughs> poured. Poured resin and <laughs> laid fiberglass. Yeah, I, I knew what you meant. But, but anyway, he's getting this we're on We're going there. concourse level. I actually found the washer with the paint pin marker to go on this. Dude, the judges are going to love this thing. If I ever take this to Amelia Island or something, they're just going to be like, wow, what a, what a, what a, what a car. And at some point, this car needs to be put together correctly and it might as well start with me. I also just wonder how many of the bolts we have sitting over there. For that. For that. I know. That is impressive. I don't, because everything's just, everything's just sitting in there. I don't, I, I, yeah. Okay, have the they paint. have paint too. Yeah. Hit yours, because I think that's going to loosen us up quite a bit. So how much space does that give us? A little bit more. Well, the good news is you can just lift this up and <laughs> look and see if there's anything else connecting it. 
There's oh, one yeah, more there's screw. screw up there. Had a, oh, here. This is why this is pried off. Because I bet you can just reach down right in there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Everything on this car was done in the most corner cutty way possible. This poor, poor car. It fell from being a $95,000 luxury exotic to the point where somebody was just like, I don't know, pry this up and break this off. I really want to put Hobby Lobby black play mat in here. Okay, well, as is the process when trying to figure out things with no instructions, things get worse before they get better sometimes. We actually had to remove the dash board, which wasn't terribly hard to do, but Jacob is now in the process of putting in the passenger version of this leather, what would you call that, center console pad. Things are moving now. We had, we had a bit of a stale period there, but now we're getting it going. He's in the process. I'm gonna see if I can come around from the other side here and see something a little bit better. Oh yeah, it's it's coming together. Yeah, it's just like, it's just the the access points to the screws are dang near impossible. And they're all pointing different directions, and it's so Italian. It's so Italian that it hurts. Yeah. yeah, I would much rather work with all plastic push pins and break like twelve of them in the process yeah. because I just don't understand other than them like assembling all of this and then putting it in and bolting it in as one piece. Like there's no easy way of doing that. But apparently it's the same process that has to be done to remove the dash to fix the heater core, which is a known failure point on these cars. So it's been done before in this car. It just was not done with care or correctly. So now we're kind of trying to piece it back together as correctly as possible. I mean, this car is never gonna win any awards for being stock or correct, but it can at least be better than I got it. So. That's what we're shooting for. No one makes a plastic dash for this. So even the stripped out Trofeo race cars still have like suede wrapped full dashes. Yeah. And all they're missing is like the, you know, the basic carpet is pulled out for metal pieces instead, but all of this still remains. So whoever did this, I don't know what they were trying to accomplish. Couldn't tell you, this whole car's a mystery, but we're at least getting it back together now. All right, status update. We got those little leather half kick panel things in and already, it's looking much, much better. Now we are in the progress of putting these kick panels in, but they have to go up underneath and wedge in. And after that, it's center console time. And next thing you know, it's gonna be a complete car. It's just gonna be a car that my wife will tolerate being in because it's not embarrassing and maybe less noisy. Certainly more plush, a lot more soft touch materials in there now, given that Playmat was pretty soft. It just wasn't, it wasn't a good kind of soft. It was, uh, it was a, it was an unsettling kind of soft. I mean, look at this. This is so sad. Why did somebody do this? Why? Look, no matter, we're undoing it. We're doing the right thing now. And we will have this interior back together in no time. Right, Jacob? Uh, yeah. Okay, so after much fighting, we got those kick panels in, as you can see. Well, I put the floor mat back in, but very fancy. We've got this coming in. Jacob right now is working on putting the dashboard back in. This thing's just falling back together. Yeah. I mean. The dash is like the easiest part of the whole car. There's not a single bolt on it. You just. There are two bolts that are probably supposed to be in it that, that are not in it. Well, they will be, but they weren't. Also, the gauge cluster is supposed to be bolted down, but those bolts weren't even in this set, so I'll have to figure out something there. I'm just really excited to get the stuff in place and see what this car actually looks like with the full interior. And thanks to Jacob's help, it's been a pretty speedy process. It was never really that tight, but I mean, it was tighter than that. What I definitely don't want <laughs> is for this dash to be looser than when we started. That, that would be worse. I've got full confidence, Jacob. He looks like looks like he knows what he's doing. Look at his face. I was just, really good at putting confidence. the shapes and the holes as a kid. So I'm, you know, supremely... Then, then you're basically a Maserati interior specialist. Yeah. Oh, look at look how gentle. It's all on the facial expression, right? They're still there. Thank God. Ugh, nothing like yanking on Italian handmade interior, huh? No, this is the right way to do it, because now we can actually bolt the dash down. So gentle. Yep. But I, it's also, presumably, this is the way Giuseppe banged it into place at the factory, too, so. Nothing quite like a well-calibrated fist to put an interior. Back. Okay, dashboard secure. We are ready for the main event. Let's, uh, let's test fit it. Look how much nicer this is. I mean, it's, ah, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Let's, let's get the dash, or get the center console in. You sure you don't want to order the car phone option? 
I do. Put I mean, I do. There was an optional car phone for this. It would be really cool to have, but. All right, man. All right. I'll let you do the honors. I'll just try to. <clears throat> Well, that might be its little internal bucket. Sure. Man, look at that, though. This is pretty much just four look how amazing that looks. So I mean, this. yeah, the sh boot's torn a little bit, but this thing's coming together. All right. So these little tabs have to slide underneath this. Here's the ashtray. This is for the ashtray, right? Yeah. After we've been taking it apart this whole time, it's clear that this interior was removed, not to save weight, not to do a race car thing, but they either did the heater core replacement or it was all butchered up when they did the radio install. And it was just simply a fact of people not wanting to put it back in because they removed it pretty poorly. And then it, they just decided it was easier to buy $50 worth of fabric from Hobby Lobby rather than put this stuff back in. And sure, it hasn't been easy, but it is a pretty bizarre move that they had all the pieces, they had all the screws, and they just opted to other crap in there. We're making it right now, and that's what matters. All right, and I think we got it all in. Let's take a look. So before, obviously this was either open or black play mat, and now it's all one piece of leather. The only downside is this thing is supposed to have another piece of leather right here that I just don't have, uh, but that is coming. Same thing with the other side. They used to be all exposed and nasty, and now it is all cohesive and together. So thank you, Jacob. You nice. did a good good job sorting through everything and getting it all together. I mean, I've got a few pieces to clean off, but I mean, it is so much more complete in here. It was a good puzzle. But yeah, so I've got a few more things to clean up, but the interior is way, way, way more together than it used to be. Anyway, huge shout out to Jacob for all the help. As you can tell, he actually did most of it. <laughs> but either way, thank you guys for watching. I've got more interior and more stuff with this car coming, so be sure to stay tuned for that. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Other than that, just like, comment, share, and all the other normal YouTube stuff, and I will see you on the next video.